Football from Yard, the People's Channel. Across Robbie Oh, he met it so well. And Whitmore! Theodore Whitmore! An absolute without leave, this is Whitmore. Paul and Gail both available, it's still Whitmore. And it's now 2-0. Greetings Football from Yad Massive, the reggae boys were held to a one-all draw with Mexico in their first leg CONCACAF Nations League match. The result guarantees Jamaica a top two finish in the three-team group and qualification for next summer's Gold Cup. Aston Villa winger Leon Bailey got on the score sheet for Jamaica while Luis Romo equalised to secure the point for Mexico. There were a few changes to the squad compared to the prior match against Suriname, with Amal Knight out due to an ailment, Paul Hall welcomed the return of starting goalkeeper and team captain Andre Blake. The squad was also bolstered by the addition of Tampa Bay Rowdies defender Jordan Scarlett and goalkeeper Kimar Foster from Mount Pleasant. Blake started in goal with Damien Lowe, Javain Brown and Amari Bell ahead of him. They were joined by Jamoy Topi who replaced the injured Richard King. Hall retained his midfield trio of Kevon Lambert, Devon Speedy Williams and Rebel Morrison, while Junior Flemings, Shamar Nicholson and Leon Bailey led the attack. Although Jamaica's defence looked vulnerable throughout the encounter, the reggae boys displayed a lot of fight in front of the modest stadium crowd and were able to create a number of dangerous opportunities of their own. In the fourth minute, Leon Bailey finished a pinpoint Shamar Nicholson cross, placing a bullet of a header into the Mexican net. As the game went on, Mexico increased the pressure on Jamaica and were eventually able to beat shot stopper Andre Blake, with Luis Romo scoring on the final play of the half. Jamaica was able to create some scoring opportunities in the second half, but Mexico looked more and more dangerous as the match went on, especially as Mexico brought on a number of attacking players from the bench. Nevertheless, Jamaica was able to secure the point, thanks to some good goalkeeping from Andre Blake and some scrappy performances from the team. Captain Andre Blake returned to his starting position, and his return was timely given the number of opportunities the Mexicans had on goal. Blake was greeted with a barrage of attacks from the very beginning of the game and gave a man of the match performance in response. Blake's distribution was adequate and he clearly made a concerted effort to make short passes when the option was available to him. He gets a score of 9. This was a game that required guts and Damon Lowe met the requirement. Lowe battled constantly with the Mexican attackers and made a number of key blocks to disrupt their attack. He was dismissed on occasions, but still made life difficult for the Mexican attackers. Lowe was also able to rescue some of his teammates when their errors led to a breakdown in the team's defensive shape. In possession, Lowe showed well for the ball and had a higher passing efficiency than some of his recent outings. With each game of the Nations League series, Lowe has upped his performance a notch. He gets a score of 8. Jamoy Tope was selected to partner Damien Lowe in the centre of the defence. Tope had his moments where he lapsed on the defensive end but was overall adequate, intercepting a number of aerial threats and making life uncomfortable for the Mexican attackers. His play in possession, on the other hand, was quite inadequate. There were a number of amateur-looking plays from Topi that led to turnovers and, in some cases, dangerous counter-attacks for the Mexicans. Topi will have to work on improving his quickness and play in possession if he plans to realise his potential. He gets a score of 5. Javian Brown's struggles on the right-hand side of the field continued in this encounter. Brown has had trouble maintaining the integrity of his flank, losing the track of the runner whenever there's a combination play among the wing-back, winger and midfielder. Not only was this evident on the night, but Brown seems to have had a substantial dip in confidence, missing numerous simple passes that any professional player should be able to make. If Brown doesn't reverse his current trend, he'll have a difficult time retaining his place in the squad, much less starting. He gets a score of 4. Amari Bell started the game with a very strong first half. The Mexican attackers occasionally found gaps on his flank, but when he was nearby, they did have trouble getting by him. He was clean in possession, playing in a simple fashion and distributing well. He was also able to draw a number of fouls when the Mexicans pressed him while he was in possession. As fatigue set in during the second half, Bell's level of play materially dipped, and he looked less comfortable when Real Betis danger man Diego Lainez entered the game. Bell is consistent, and you know what you're getting with him. He gets a score of 6. Kevin Lambert worked hard on the night on the defensive end and eventually had to leave the field due to a combination of injury and fatigue. Lambert once again provided a good shield in front of the defense, but at times was too static when the Mexicans vacated the middle. In possession, Lambert was substandard from the get-go, turning over the ball multiple times, especially when pressed by the Mexicans. While Lambert provides some defensive stability, the team will continue to struggle with its problem of transitioning from defense to attack if he isn't quicker and more efficient in possession. He gets a score of 5. Devon Speedy Williams writes roughly the same review in most matches. 
He had a strong defensive presence on the night, covering a lot of ground to blunt the Mexican attacks, including one opportunity that looked like it would be a sure goal. He connected well with his teammates to maintain possession, but his play was much less effective the closer he got to the opposition goal. There wasn't as much activity in the opponent's half, and he had a couple NFL looking shots on goal. All in all, Speedy played a vital role in securing a point for the team. He gets a score of 7. Ravel Morrison had moments in the game, having less of the possession than the coaching staff probably would want him to have. However, when he did have the ball, he looked very dangerous, launching a number of counter-attacks and using short snappy passes to connect with his fellow midfielders and forwards. The Mexicans clearly weren't comfortable against him, with one player losing his footing altogether after some sharp footwork from Morrison. On the defensive end, Morrison pressed quite a bit, but also wasted a lot of energy because some of his teammates weren't synchronized with his pressing. He gets a score of 7. Junior Flemings had a frustrating night. He provided his usual high energy level and had good spurts of attacking play, but was unable to replicate the performance of the past two games. The Mexicans clearly read the scouting report on Flemings and closed him down quickly, whether he received the ball in a deep position or far upfield. They were quick to foul him in his own half, preventing him from getting into the flow of the game and immediately cancelling the threat he usually provides with his mazy runs. Flemings provided strong defensive support, but faded as fatigue set in in the second half. He gets a score of 6. Leon Bailey returned to the starting lineup and treated the fans to a clinical goal, completing a combination play among Bailey, Ravel Morrison and Shamar Nicholson. In the first half in particular, Bailey looked dangerous and the Mexican defence was put off balance when he was able to break their traps. On a couple of occasions, he was close to adding a second goal to his name. The match didn't see Bailey realising his full potential as a number of promising players broke down when he did the difficult task very well but was let down by his decision making at the end of the play. On the defensive end, Bailey did put in his fair share of work, making a number of interceptions in his own half. He gets a score of 7. The Mexican defence always looked uncomfortable having to deal with Shamar Nicholson. He won a number of long balls and he was unlucky not to get on the score sheet on the night. He had one header hit the post and another opportunity was cleared off the line by the Mexican defence. Nicholson showed a wider range of passing than you typically see from him, including a pinpoint left-footed cross to Leon Bailey to open the scoring. Nicholson needs to do a bit more on the defensive end, as there were occasions where the defensive pressing broke down because of his lack of urgency. He gets a score of 6. Rolanda Ahrens, Jamaica's only substitute on the night, started the game with a bang, making a few dangerous runs. He then had a couple substandard plays where better decision making could have been utilised. Aarons appears to be a little bit off in terms of his match sharpness, as you'd expect from somebody who hasn't played many club games recently. He gets a score of 5. The point gained was a highly important one, as it qualifies Jamaica for the 2023 Gold Cup, a tournament that guarantees quality opposition for the national team and substantially boosts the Federation's finances, assuming the Federation and the players have agreed to an allocation of earnings. The winner of the Nations League group will be determined next March when Jamaica play Mexico in an away game and Mexico also plays against Suriname. Until then we'll have to wait to see what plans the Federation and coach Paul Hall have for the national team. I should probably say interim coach Paul Hall because it doesn't seem that he's actually signed a contract as yet. Going forward let's hope that the drama is a thing of the past, egos are put aside and all stakeholders are focused. Bless up once again, linkage next time. Cross Robbie Oh, he met it so well. And Whitmore! Theodore Whitmore. An absolute without lead. This is Whitmore. Paul and Gale both available. It's still Whitmore. And it's now 2-0.